This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video I wanted to talk about something that seems like kind of a small thing, but you might find useful in your coding with either Unity or with C Sharp in general. And that's about uh, creating strings. And I'm not talking about just writing a simple string, you know, using string equals and quotation marks, but when you're trying to do more complex things, combining your data with strings to present something to the player. So I want to talk about three different ways that you can make a string. First, let's create a C Sharp script. I'm going to call this String Maker. And I'm going to attach this to the main camera just so that we can kind of run, run it and see what's happening in it. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. And I'm going to create some simple data here. I'm going to have a string called name. I'll set equal to Ben. I'll have an integer called um, number of pets, set that to 2, and let's have a boolean in here too so we can see how something a little bit more complex works. Let's call it is busy, and we'll set it equal to true. Okay, so with this data now, we let's say we want to just kind of log to the console a string about myself. I want to say my name is Ben, I have two pets, and I either am busy or I'm not busy. So the kind of standard way we would do this is with what's called concatenation, where we basically take strings and pieces of data and kind of add them all together using the plus operator to, um, to just create this really long string. It would go something like this. We would say string, um, you know, concat string equals hi, I'm name, I have number of pets, and depending on what you're working with, you might even have to cast that number of pets to a string. Typically, Unity handles that for you, but we'll put it in there just to be safe. Um, and I am, and then we could even do something like a, um, a conditional here. We could say something like is busy question mark. And if we are busy, we would say, I am very busy. Otherwise, we might say, I am not busy. And so we'll kind of contain that all inside of these parentheses so we know that it's ultimately going to be either very or not in here, plus busy at the moment. OK, and so there's our string. And so it's ulti this ultimately kind of combines these strings and this data all together into one string. In fact, if I go debug.log concat string, we'll see that this works. If I jump back to Unity, go to my console, close up a bit, hit play, and we see, hi, I'm Ben. I have two. I didn't actually clarify what the two was, and I'm very busy at the moment. So this works, it's perfectly usable. Add in, that's here. Um, but there's a couple things, it's a little bit clunky. We have to keep on you know, closing our quotes, um, adding plus signs, adding in data, uh, reopening quotes. We have to make sure that we have spaces in the proper locations, otherwise we're gonna have words jammed together that we don't want. And in general, concatenation isn't super efficient. But it's typically speaking the way that most of us know how to create strings. However, there's a couple of better ways. The first one is using a formatted string. And this basically uses the same idea, but instead of individually dropping these in with these manual um, plus signs, we can tell this method, hey, we're going to write this string and we're going to put some placeholders in and then give you a list of parameters that are what we want in those placeholders. So how we do that is we'll say string format string, separate this a bit, equals, and this time we're going to say string dot format. So we're actually using string as its class name and calling the format method on it. And we're going to pass in first the string that we want. So we're going to say hi again, I'm, but now anywhere we're going to do a placeholder, we're going to instead use curly braces and a number. So in this case, zero for the very first one. It's um, the, the future parameters are zero indexed. So hi, I'm zero, comma, 
I have, and we'll put in a one placeholder, pets, and I am too busy right now. So this is actually going to complain to us a little bit because we don't have, we're not using any of these. Actually, it might not in this particular case, but we, we do need something in those, otherwise it's not going to um, put anything there. So what we'll do is we'll say, as, a, as our first parameter now, we're going to pass in name. For our second parameter here, we're going to pass in number of pets. And for our third parameter here, we're going to pass in this whole statement again. Save that. And then we'll debug.log format string. Go back to Unity and hit play. You now see we get two strings here. Uh, both look pretty similar. I changed the ending a little bit just to show the difference. But what's happening is in the second one now, instead of having to kind of start and stop our strings and you know kind of shoehorn data in there, we can simply let the um, format method know we're going to be dropping some stuff in, but it's a lot smoother. It's a lot more streamlined than having to kind of stop our strings, start our strings, and have all these opening and closing quotes everywhere. It's even a little bit shorter of a call for us. So this is, you know, overall a better system, but there's still a little bit of um, confusion to it, I guess, because, you know, you have to remember now this, this particular parameter associates with this one, this one goes to here, etc. One nice thing about this option is that you can um, reuse parameters multiple times. So I could drop, you know, a two in further down, earlier on, wherever I want, which is nice. But um, I'm gonna want, I wanna show you one more way that you can do this that's even a little bit more streamlined. Now, in order for this next one to work, we're actually going to have to change settings a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna start it and we'll see where this error comes in. So if I say now string interpolated string equals, and this time what I'm gonna do is it's, I'm gonna start this like a normal string with quotes, but before those quotes, I'm actually going to put a dollar sign. And now right here, I should start to get, let's see here, hi, I'm, Interesting, I'm surprised that's not throwing me errors yet. Let me save this quickly and see if I jump back to Unity, it might show it there. Yes, so here we see, um, I think Visual Studio was cool with this, but you'll see that um, Unity doesn't like the fact that I'm using this. Feature interpolated strings cannot be used because it is not part of the C Sharp 4 language specification. Um, Unity uses by default C Sharp 4 for all of all the coding that you're going to do. However, you can update this a little bit. How we do this is we go up to Edit and down to Project Settings and go down to Player. In Player, you're going to want to go down to the Other Settings tab here. Um, you'll see it just before XR Settings. And then scroll down about two-thirds of the way to where it says Configuration. And here you're going to see Scripting Runtime Version, uh, .NET 3.5 Equivalent. You can choose from 3.5 or 4.x. If you switch that over to 4.x, it's going to tell you you need to restart the editor, which is fine, we can restart that. And what's simply going to happen, I will save my scene, is that we're now switching over and saying that instead of using um, C Sharp 4, we're gonna be using, I believe it's C Sharp 6 or something even beyond that, um, which allows for interpolated strings among other, um, among other things, but just gives us a little bit more of a feature set. I don't know that it's worth it to switch over to this just to get interpolated strings, but um, if it's, it's something that if you're using some more of the modern features of C-sharp, can be useful to you. Okay, so this is reopened now. We see here, if we go back to edit project settings player, I go down here, we now see that I'm using um, 4.x equivalent for .NET. So what that means is that now I'm not getting that complaint about interpolated string not existing. So now what I can do is instead of saying, hi, I'm, and then, you know, starting and stopping strings, and instead of even putting just a zero that I don't necessarily know what that means, I can actually say in here, hi, I'm, 
still using curly braces, but we can put name directly in there so we see exactly what's going to appear there. So I can say, hi, I'm name. I have number of pets, pets, and I am, and again here I'm going to copy this whole statement here, close that curly brace, busy today. And then we'll log that to the console as well. And now if we hit play one more time, we should see that we get that third line, same exact effect, but our code is a lot more streamlined now. It's basically essentially what we're saying. It just happens to be that the placeholders are there, but we at least have a sense of what that placeholder is. It's my name variable. It's my number of pets variable. I could even change these. I could say something like in between these two, I could say number of pets equals 10 and is busy equals false. And these will reflect those variables. So if I go back to Unity, start and stop this, we see now that that changes, that's reflecting the variables that I have there. So again, it's strings, it's kind of super simple stuff, um, but I wanted to show you guys, I found that these can be a lot more convenient when you are writing strings and if you're working with a lot of strings in your game, this can be a great way to streamline what you're doing and get a better sense of what's going to be appearing where and make you a little bit less error prone as you're writing your strings. Hope you've enjoyed this video, hope you found it useful, and uh, good luck with your game design. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.